Uh, it's a privilege to be uh, engaged in a conversation with my uh, colleague Elizabeth Spelke. We go back a long way. Uh, we've been colleagues both at uh, MIT, where I helped attract her, and at Harvard, where she helped attract me. Uh, like uh, most people in my field, I have uh, enormous admiration for Liz's brilliant contributions to our understanding of the origins of cognition. Uh, but we do find ourselves uh, with somewhat different perspectives on a uh, recent issue. And for those of you who've just arrived from Mars, there's been a certain amount of discussion uh, here at Harvard on a particular datum. And that is the underrepresentation of women among tenure track faculty in elite universities in physical science, math, and engineering. And here are some uh, recent figures. Now, uh, as with many issues in psychology, there are three broad classes of explanations. Uh, one can imagine an extreme nature position that males but not females have the talents and temperaments necessary for science. Needless to say, uh, only a madman could believe that, and uh, there aren't any proponents of that position. There's an extreme nurture position that males and females are biologically indistinguishable, and all the relevant sex differences are products of socialization and bias. And then there's an intermediate position that the difference is explainable by some combination of biological differences in average temperaments and talents interacting with socialization and bias. Well, Liz has embraced uh, the extreme nurture position, ironically enough, because uh, standardly in cognitive science, she and I are always put in the same camp as uh, the innatists when it comes to explaining the mind. But uh, Liz has said that there is not a shred of evidence for the biological factor that the case against there being a male advantage is so overwhelming that it is hard to see how one can make a case for it on the other side, and that this is as conclusive uh, as any finding that I know of in science. Well, we certainly aren't uh, facing the uh, stereotypical gender difference in confidence here. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a controversial guy. I've taken a lot of controversial positions uh, over the years, and uh, as a member of Homo sapiens, I think I'm right on all of them. But um, on the other hand, I don't think that in any of them I would say that there's not a shred of evidence for the other side, that uh, even if I think the evidence favors one side, uh, I, don't, I would not say that the other side can't even make a case, even if I think that their case is not as good as the opposite. And as for as conclusive as any finding uh, in science. I mean, this is social science. This would imply that the extreme nurture position is more convincing than, say, the evidence that the sun is at the center of the solar system or the laws of thermodynamics, theory of evolution, plate tectonics, and so on. I think these are rather extreme statements, um, especially in light of the fact that there is an enormous amount of uh, work summarized in, in uh, these and many other literature reviews that, uh, in fact, come to a very different conclusion. And um, I'll cite from one of them a uh, book called Sex Differences in Cognitive Abilities by Diane Halpern, a uh, respected psychologist, recently elected president of the APA, and someone with no theoretical ax to grind, certainly does not subscribe to any particular theory, and has been a critic, for example, of evolutionary psychology. And here's what she wrote in the preface to her book. At the time I started writing this book, it seemed clear to me that any between-sex differences in thinking abilities were due to socialization practices, artifacts, and mistakes in the research. After reviewing a pile of journal articles that stood several feet high and numerous books and book chapters that dwarfed the stack of journal articles, I changed my mind. The literature on sex differences in cognitive abilities is filled with inconsistent findings, contradictory theories, and emotional claims that are unsupported by the research. Yet despite all the noise in the data, clear and consistent messages could be heard. There are real, and in some cases, sizable sex differences with respect to some cognitive abilities. Socialization practices are undoubtedly important, but there is also good evidence that biological sex differences play a role in establishing and maintaining cognitive sex differences, a conclusion I wasn't prepared to make when I began reviewing the relevant literature. And this this uh, captures my assessment uh, perfectly. Now, uh, again, for the benefit of uh, the uh, Martians in this room, uh, this isn't just any old issue in uh, empirical psychology. And uh, there are some political colorings to it. And so I want to begin with um, just a confession of my own politics. And that is, uh, I am a feminist. Uh, I believe that women have been uh, oppressed and discriminated against and uh, harassed for thousands of years. I believe that the uh, 
two waves of the feminist movement in the 20th century uh, are among the proudest achievements in our species. I'm prou happy to have lived through one of them, and uh, including the effort to increase representation of women in the sciences. Uh, but in, uh, in order to endorse this claim, I think it's crucial to distinguish between the moral proposition that people should not be discriminated against on account of their sex, which I take to be the core of feminism, and the empirical claim that males and females are biologically indistinguishable. These are not the same thing. Uh, indeed, distinguishing them, I think, is essential to protecting the core of feminism, since anyone who takes a, an honest interest in science has to be prepared for the facts to come out either way. It's essential that we don't hold the ideals of feminism hostage to the latest findings that come out of the lab or field, which would only result in, uh, if it came out one way, saying that uh, I guess sex discrimination wasn't so bad after all, or else in uh, furiously spin-doctoring the, the scientific results to preserve the political principle. The truth cannot be sexist, and uh, whatever the facts turn out to be, uh, I don't think they compromise the core of uh, feminism. Well, why study sex differences? Uh, believe me, being the Bobby Riggs of cognitive science is not my idea of a good time. Uh, and um, why study them? I don't, it's not the focus of my own research, but on the other hand, uh, as a curious person, uh, the difference between the sexes is uh, part of our, uh, the human condition. Uh, we all have a mother and a father. We, uh, most of us are attracted to members of the opposite sex, and the rest of us know, notice the difference uh, from those who do. And we can't help but notice the sex of our children, friends, and colleagues in every walk of life. Also, the topic of uh, sex differences has, is of great scientific interest. It's a fundamental problem in biology because sex goes back probably a, a billion years, sex differences. There's an interesting theory, which I won't have time to get into, that predicts that there should be an overall and equal investment of organisms in males and females. Neither uh, sex is predicted to be superior or inferior. But also an elegant theory, uh, Bob Trevor's theory of differential minimum parental investment that makes some highly specific predictions about when you should expect differences. Also, it's of practical importance. Uh, I think there are aspects of the world that we uh, want to change, but if we want to change the world, we must first understand it, and that includes understanding the sources of sex differences. So let me get back to the datum to be explained. In many ways, this is a very exotic phenomenon. Uh, it involves biologically unprepared talents and temperaments. Evolution certainly did not shape any part of the mind in order to be a uh, professor of mechanical engineering at MIT, for example. Uh, and so the datum has nothing to do with basic uh, cognitive processes or those that we use in our everyday lives uh, in school or even at, in most college courses where indeed there are few sex differences. So this datum is not about uh, that kind of performance. We're also talking about extremes of achievement. Uh, most women are not qualified to be math professors at Harvard because most men aren't qualified to be math professors at Harvard. We are talking about uh, extremes in the population. We're talking about a subset of fields, that it is not the case that women are underrepresented to that extent in all academic fields, and certainly not in all prestigious professions. And also we're talking about a statistical effect. This is such a crucial point that I want to um, uh, discuss it in some detail. Women are nowhere near absent, even from the fields in which they are underrepresented. Uh, and the explanations for differences must be statistical as well. And here is just a touchstone for this entire discussion. Uh, these are two Gaussian or normal dis distributions, bell curves, where this is a, uh, anything that you want to measure. The x-axis, the y-axis is the uh, proportion of people at that ability. This is what it typically looks like when you compare the sexes on any measure in which they differ. Namely, if we, if for this example, if we say that this is the male curve and this is the female curve, at it, the means may be different, but at any particular level of the variable, there are always representatives of both genders. Um, so right away, uh, a number of uh, statements that have been made in the events of the last couple of months are simply red herrings uh, that should not have been made by uh, people who understand this, such as the accusation that, for example, President Summers implied that 50% of the brightest minds in America do not have the right aptitude for science, 
that women just can't cut it, uh, and so on. These are uh, statistically illiterate and have nothing to do with uh, what we're actually discussing. Now, an important corollary of two overlapping normal distributions, one of them is that the normal distribution falls off according to the negative exponential of the square of the difference from the mean. And that means that even with small differences in the means of two distributions, the more extreme the score, the greater the disparity in the numbers. That is, the ratios get more extreme as you go farther out along the tail. If we hold a magnifying glass uh, up to the tails of the distribution, even though they overlap over the bulk of the curve, when you get out to the extremes, the difference between the two curves gets larger and larger. Which means, uh, oh, to give you an example, we know that the distribution of height between men and women uh, overlap. It's not the case that all men are taller than all women. Uh, and at 5 foot 10, uh, there are 30 men for every woman, whereas at 6 feet, there are 2,000 men for uh, every woman. Now, the uh, sex differences in cognition tend not to be uh, anything like that, but uh, that's just to reinforce the statistical point. Another important corollary is that tail ratios are affected by differences in variance. And uh, biologists since Darwin have noted that for many traits and many species, males are the more variable gender. So even in cases where the mean for, say, women and the mean for men is the same, the fact that there are more men uh, dispersed at the extremes means that at the tails, the proportion of men would be higher at one tail and higher at the other. Uh, some, as it's sometimes uh, summarized, uh, that more prodigies, more idiots. <laughs> so let, let, me st uh, let me begin with the, the uh, first point in connecting the political issue to the scientific issue, and that is that uh, as economists who study patterns of discrimination have long argued, often to no avail, there's a, a crucial conceptual difference between a difference and discrimination. That a departure from a 50-50 ratio in any profession does not by itself imply discrimination unless the interests and aptitudes are statistically equated. And let me just illustrate that with an example, and I'll use myself. Uh, I am in a field that is, uh, in fact, um, dominated by women. 75% uh, of the uh, main professional association in the study of child language is female, as are majority of the uh, keynote speakers at our main conference. Um, I'm here to tell you that it's not because I was uh, discriminated against. I decided to study language development as opposed to, say, mechanical engineering uh, for many reasons. Uh, I don't think that uh, designing a better automobile transmission is, would turn me on as much as uh, figuring out how kids acquire language. And I don't think I'd be as good at it as I am at studying child language. Um, now, all we need to do in order to uh, explain uh, differences uh, without presumably getting anyone uh, upset about possible sexist interpretation is to, realize, to ask whether whatever traits that I have that give me that predisposition are exactly equally distributed statistically among men and among women. For all those of you out there who also are not mechanical engineers, then you should uh, understand what I'm talking about, of both genders. Okay, there are many similarities between the sexes. There are no differences in general intelligence or G. They are exactly the same on the money. Basic categories of cognition, how we negotiate our world and live our everyday life, our concept of objects, number, people, living things, and so on, show no differences. And indeed, in cases where there are differences, there's pretty much as many instances in which men do slightly better than women as in which women do slightly better than men. Just to give you a few examples, men are better at throwing, women are more dexterous. Men are better at mentally rotating shapes, women are better at visual memory. Men are better at problem solving, uh, women are better at mathematical calculation, and on and on and on. But there are six differences that are relevant to this datum. Uh, and uh, the literature is, uh, on this is so enormous that uh, I'm, uh, I can only touch a, a fraction of it, and I'll restrict myself to a few cases where there are enormous data sets or meta-analyses that try to boil down the literature. The first difference, long noted by uh, economists studying employment patterns, is that men and women differ in what they state uh, are their own priorities in life. That to sum it up, men on average are more likely to chase status at the expense of uh, family. Women give a different weighting. Now, again, think statistics. It doesn't mean that uh, women 
value family and not status. It doesn't mean that men value status and not family, nor does it mean that every last woman or every last man has this asymmetry. But in large data sets, on average, that's what you find. And one, just one example of this is in the study of mathematically precocious youth. Uh, in this case, 1,729 people who were uh, selected in uh, seventh grade for being in the top 1% of ability in mathematics. These are uh, men and women who are and then followed up decades later. They are certainly equally talented. Uh, if anyone has ever been encouraged at math and science, uh, these kids were both genders. They are equal in terms of their levels of achievement and e they report being equally satisfied with the course of their lives. Uh, nonetheless, there are a number of statistical differences in what they say is important to them. Uh, it, it, there are a number of cases in which uh, females rate things higher than males, such as the ability to have a part-time career for a limited time in one's life, living close to parents and relatives, having a meaningful spiritual life, having strong friendships. For the traits that men rate to be uh, rate as higher than women on average, uh, they are, include having lots of money, <laughs> inventing or creating something, having a full-time career, being successful in my line of work. Uh, and it's worth noting that studies of highly successful people note that single-mindedness and competitiveness is a recurring trait in uh, geniuses of both sexes. Now here's just one other figure from this uh, data set. Uh, as you might expect, this, this sample has a lot of people who like to work Herculean hours, a lot of people who like to work uh, 50, 60, even seven hour, 70 hours a week, but there are slight differences at each one of these ranges. There are slightly more men than women who want to, uh, uh, don't care whether or not they have a life. <laughs> uh, second, uh, people versus things and uh, abstract rule systems. There is a staggering amount of data on this because there's a whole field of psychology and economics that studies people's vocational interests. I bet most people in this room have taken one of those tests at some point in their lives. And there are consistent differences in the kinds of uh, things that appeal to men and women in their ideal job. Uh, I'll just discuss one of them, which is a, a uh, desire to work with people versus things where there is a enormous, that is a one standard deviation in terms of uh, men over women. Uh, and indeed, this will tend to cause people to gravitate in slightly different directions. For the, uh, the occupation that's strongest at the people end of this continuum is a director of a community services organization. The occupations that are strongest at the things end are physicist, chemist, mathematician, computer programmer, and biologist. Um, and you see this not only in choice of uh, whether to go into, so into um, uh, science, but also in which branch of science the sexes go into. Uh, needless to say, from 1970 to 2002, there's been a huge increase in the, in the percentage of uh, degrees awarded to women. But among the PhDs, for example, you find a uh, difference, we'll take the year 2001, that in education, 65% of the doctorates go to women, 54% of social science degrees, 47% of life science, 26% of physical science, 17% of engineering, which is perfectly predictable by the continuum between people and living things and inanimate objects. And this is pretty much the same in 1980 and 2001, despite changes in absolute numbers. Third, uh, risk. Uh, men are by far the more reckless sex. Uh, in a large meta-analysis involving 150 studies and 100,000 participants, in 14 out of 16 categories of risk-taking, uh, men were overrepresented. Uh, the two sexes were equal on the other two, one of which was, was uh, smoking for uh, obvious reasons. Uh, and two of the largest sex differences were in intellectual risk-taking and participation in a risky experiment. And I think it's because of this that we, all, in everyday life, we do see such a difference. Men are uh, very much overrepresented in the following category, uh, namely the Darwin Awards, <laughs> commemorating those individuals who ensure the long-term survival of our species by removing themselves from the gene pool in a sublimely idiotic fashion, in which I think virtually all, perhaps all, of the winners are men. Um, fourth, three-dimensional mental transformations, the ability to determine whether these, uh, each of these pairs of objects represents the same three-dimensional shape. Uh, in a, again, I'll appeal to a, um, a meta-analysis, 286 data sets, 100,000 subjects, 
and the authors say, we have specified a number of tests that show highly significant sex differences that are stable across age, at least after puberty, and have not decreased in recent years. Uh, in this case, the test there is the advantage goes to the men, although, as I mentioned, the advantage goes to women in other uh, kinds of spatial ability. But in mental rotation, spatial perception, and spatial visualization, uh, there are sex differences in tipping in the male direction. Now, does this have any relevance to scientific achievement? Well, we don't really know for sure, but there's some reason to think that it is, that uh, three-dimensional uh, spatial visualization is correlated with mathematical problem solving, and it figures prominently in the uh, memoirs and introspections of most uh, creative physicists and chemists, uh, including Faraday, Maxwell, Tesla, Kekulé, uh, at Lawrence, all of whom claim to have hit upon their discoveries by uh, dynamic uh, visual imagery and only later set them down in equations. A typical quote is as follows, the psychical entities which seem to serve as elements in my thought are certain signs and more or less clear images which can be voluntarily reproduced and combined. This combinatory play seems to be the essential feature in productive thought before there is any connection with logical construction in words or other kinds of signs. Uh, and that is a quote from a fairly well-known scientist. Uh, mathematical reasoning. Um, girls and women get better school grades in mathematics and pretty much everything else these days. Um, and women are better at mathematical calculation, but uh, consistently men uh, score at least statistically better on mathematical word problems and on tests of mathematical reasoning. Um, again, the, a meta-analysis, 254 data sets, 3 million subjects shows no significant difference in childhood. This is a difference that emerges uh, uh, around puberty, but there are sizable differences in adolescence and adulthood, especially in high-end samples. Um, here is a, an example of the uh, SAT mathematical uh, score where there is about a 40-point difference in favor of men that's pretty much consistent from 1972 to uh, 1997. In the st study of mathematically precocious youth in which uh, seventh graders were given the SAT, which of course ordinarily is administered only to college-bound uh, kids who are much older. Um, the ratio of those scoring over 700 is uh, 2.8 to 1, male to female. And uh, admittedly and interestingly, that's down from uh, 25 years ago when it was a 13 to 1 ratio. And perhaps we can discuss some of the reasons. Uh, above, uh, at the 760 cutoff, the ratio uh, nowadays is 7 to 1, male to female. Now, why is there a discrepancy with grades? Um, do SATs and other tests of mathematical reasoning underpredict grades, or do grades overpredict high-end aptitude? Um, at the Radcliffe Forum, uh, Liz was very explicit in which side she takes, saying that the tests are no good, and, uh, unquote. Well, one question is, why does every ma major graduate program, including MIT and Harvard, the very departments where Liz and I selected our graduate students by looking at GRE scores, still use them if they are so useless? And I think the reason is that compared to school grades in which you uh, are often, which often are affected by homework, by solving the kind of problems that have already been presented in lecture and textbooks, the aptitude tests are designed to test the, applica the application of mathematical knowledge to unfamiliar problems, which is, of course, the way that math is used in actually doing math and science. Uh, and in fact, I think contrary to popular opinion of uh, Liz and uh, many intellectuals, uh, the tests are very good. There is an enormous amount of data on the predictive uh, power of SAT tests. Uh, among people in science careers, they overwhelmingly score in the 90th percentile in the uh, SAT or GRAE math. Uh, and they predict earnings, occupational choice, doctoral degrees, the prestige of one's degree, uh, have the probability of having a tenure-track position, and the number of patents. Moreover, this predictive power is the same for men and women. As for why there is that underprediction, slight underprediction, one-tenth of a standard deviation in undergraduate grades, uh, the um, uh, College Board did do a study on that, and they were able to explain it by a combination of the choice of major, which differs among sexes, and the greater conscientiousness of, of women solving that mystery. Finally, there's variability. Uh, here it's crucial to, uh, because estimates of variance depend on the tails of the distribution, which by definition are uh, less numerous, uh, and uh, since people at the tails are likely to be weeded out of many surveys for various reasons, 
It's important uh, to have large representative samples from national populations. And for this, the gold standard is the science paper by Novell and Hedges uh, with six large stratified probability samples in which they found that in 35 out of, 35, uh, 35 out of 37 tests, including all of the ones in math, space, and science, the male variance was greater than the female variance. One other uh, gold standard data set is um, this graph of where the entire population of Scotland was given an intelligence test. Uh, what we have here, this is IQ where the mean is, a, is 100 and uh, this is the proportion of men and the proportion of women and as you can see there's a very orderly finding in the middle part of the range uh, females predominate at both extremes, males slightly predominate. Needless to say, there's a large percentage of women at both ends as well, but there is also a sex difference. Now, the fact that these differences exist does not mean that they are innate. And this, of course, is a much more difficult question to answer. Uh, a, to uh, a, a prelude is that um, nature and nurture are not alternatives. It is possible that the answer involves uh, some of each. Uh, but I think that there are 10 kinds of evidence that at least suggest that the contribution of biology is greater than zero, though it is certainly nowhere near 100%. First is that there are lots of mechanism, biological mechanisms by which a sex difference uh, could occur. There are large differences in uh, sex hormones in men and women, especially prenatally in the first six months of life and in uh, adolescence after puberty. There are receptors for hormones all over the brain, including the cerebral cortex, there are many small differences that have been noted in men's and women's brains, including the uh, so overall size of the brain, even con correcting for body size, and the density of cortical neurons, cortical asymmetry, hypothalamic nuclei, and a number of others. Many uh, sex differences, uh, certainly some, maybe all, are universal. The idea that there are cultures out there somewhere in which everything is the reverse of here uh, turns out to be a, a myth. Um, in Human Universals, the anthropologist Donald Brown surveying this literature points out that in all cultures, men and women are seen as having different natures, that there's a greater involvement of women in direct childcare, more uh, competitiveness in various measures uh, for men than women, and a greater spatial range uh, of men compared to women. In uh, personality, uh, there was a, at least a cross-national sample. Uh, in Feingold's meta-analysis, he noted gender differences in personality that are consistent across ages, years of data collection, educational levels, and nations. In terms of uh, spatial and math abilities, I think we have less data. And uh, the, the honest answer is that we don't have cro true cross-cultural surveys, although we do have cross-national surveys. Uh, David Geary and uh, Catherine DeSoto uh, found a, the expected sex difference in mental rotation in 10 European countries, Ghana, Turkey, and China. And Diane Halpern, analyzing results from seven uh, uh, country, uh, 10 countries, said that the majority of the findings show amazing cross-cultural consistency when comparing males and females on cognitive tests. Stability over time. In life interests and personality, there's been little or no change despite two generations of uh, second wave of feminism. Um, there is also, uh, famously, resistance to change in communities that for various ideological reasons were dedicated to stamping out sex differences and found that they were unable to do so. Uh, these include the Israeli kibbutz, uh, various rural American utopian communities of the end of the 19th century, and contemporary androgynous academic couples. In um, mental rotation, there, the meta-analysis by Boyer et al. found no change over time. In mathematical reasoning, there uh, has been a uh, decline in the difference, uh, although it has certainly not disappeared. Fourth, many of these differences can be seen in other mammals, suggesting that it's unlikely that the difference was arbitrarily replicated in humans. There is a big difference in many mammals between men and, uh, males and females in aggression. Uh, in investment in offspring, in aggressive play versus play parenting, in the range size and also the spatial ability, such as solving mazes, at least in polygynous species, uh, like, like uh, as humans are, and even in a number of primate species, an interest in physical objects versus conspecifics as seen in patterns of juvenile play. Even baby vervet monkeys prefer, uh, the males prefer to, to uh, play with trucks and the uh, females with uh, other toys. 
Um, many of these em emerged in early childhood. Uh, in the literature, there's a, uh, it's said that there is a technical term for people who believe that boys and girls are indistinguishable and are molded into their, nat their different natures by parental socialization. The term for such people is childless. Some differences uh, are, seem to emerge even in the first week of life. Um, girls respond more to sounds of distress. Girls make more eye contact. And in a study that I know that Liz disputes that I hope we'll talk about, there is uh, one study uh, claiming that newborns, uh, the boys are more interested in physical objects, the girls in uh, people, or at least in a face. A uh, little later, there are vast and robust uh, sex differences all over the world. Boys, far more often than girls, engage in rough and tumble play involving ag aggression, physical activity, and competition. Girls mo more often in cooperative play. Uh, girls engage much more often in play parenting. And uh, yes, it, it really is true that uh, boys will turn anything into a vehicle or a weapon, and uh, girls will turn things into dolls. Uh, there are differences in intuitive psychology, how well kids can read each one another's minds. Uh, there are a number of um, documentations of a uh, sex difference in solving the false belief task uh, and in interpreting the mental states of characters in stories in favor of uh, girls. Um, sixth, genetic boys brought up as girls. They're uh, in a famous case, sometimes called the John Joan case. A uh, one member of a pair of identical twin boys uh, lost his penis in a botched circumcision. I was relieved to find that this was not done by a moil, but by a bungling uh, surgeon. The, um, under advice from the uh, gender psychologists of, of the time, the parents agreed to have the boy castrated, given uh, female-specific uh, hormones, and brought up as a girl. This uh, was hidden from him until he was 14. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, in undergraduate, this case was taught to me as an instance of how uh, gender roles are completely socially acquired. But uh, it turned out that the uh, facts had been suppressed, and when he was, this uh, boy was revisited, it turned out that right from uh, the earliest ages, he uh, was um, exhibited male-specific patterns, uh, aggression and rough-and-tumble play, exactly characteristic of boys, a greater interest in things uh, and, than uh, people. Uh, at the age of 14, suffering from depression, his father finally uh, told him the truth. He underwent further surgery, married a woman, uh, adopted some children, and got a job in a slaughterhouse. Uh, <laughs> now, this is not just a, a single instance. Uh, in a condition called cloacal extrophy, uh, genetic boys are sometimes born without normal male genitalia, and when they have been uh, again, castrated uh, and uh, brought up as girls, in 25 out of 25 documented instances, they uh, felt that they were boys trapped in girls' bodies and showed male-specific patterns of rough-and-tumble play and uh, so on. Uh, seven, lack of differential treatment by parents and teachers. In a, this is, these two findings surprise a lot of people. Um, one is that if you, uh, in Litton and Romney did a meta-analysis of sex-specific socialization involving 172 studies, 28,000 uh, children looking at both reports and direct observations of how pa parents treat their sons and daughters and found few or no differences among contemporary Americans. Uh, and in particular, there was no difference in the two categories of encouraging achievement and encouraging achievement in mathematics. Um, also, there's a widespread myth that uh, teachers are in, who, of course, are still disproportionately female are actually dupes in perpetuating gender in inequities in uh, failing to call on girls and otherwise having low expectations of their performance. In fact, uh, Jessamyn Eccles, in a study of 100 teachers and 1,800 students, concluded that teachers seem to be basing their perceptions of students on those students' actual performance and motivation. Um, studies of prenatal sex hormones, the uh, mechanism that makes boys boys and girls girls in the first place, there is some evidence, although admittedly um, uh, squishy in parts, that uh, this makes a difference even within a social gender. In the condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, uh, girls are uh, in utero are subjected to uh, a, an increased dose of androgens, later uh, um, nullified postnatally, but when they grow up, they have uh, male typical toy preferences compared to uh, other girls in terms of uh, trucks and uh, guns. 
Male typical play patterns, more competitive, less cooperative. Male typical occupational preferences. Uh, however, uh, the research on their spatial uh, abilities is inconclusive, and I uh, will not be willing to say that uh, there's been a good demonstration that they have male typical patterns of spatial cognition. Um, similarly, variations in fetal testosterone uh, studied in various ways show that fetal testosterone has a um, curvilinear relationship to uh, reduced eye contact and face perception at 12 months, reduced vocabulary at 18 months, greater, uh, um, reduced social skills and, and greater narrowness of interest at 48 months, and a uh, enhanced mental rotation in the school age years. Um, circulating sex hormones, I'm going to go over this slide pretty quickly because uh, I think the literature is uh, a bit of a mess. It's possible that uh, all of it is uh, bogus. I suspect that, uh, that there is something to be salvaged uh, uh, from it, from this somewhat contradictory literature, uh, but, uh, but I will admit that it is, does not present a uh, perfectly clear picture. Nonetheless, there are many studies showing that a normal to low male range of testosterone is associated with better spatial abilities in a variety of ways in which hormones are compared or manipulated, and some evidence disputed that there are uh, statistical changes in the uh, strengths and, and uh, weaknesses in cognition of women during the uh, menstrual cycle, paralleling the changes in uh, men during the daily and seasonal cycles. Uh, the last bit of evidence is uh, on imprinted X chromosomes. Um, that there, it turns out uh, it's been discovered that there's an entirely separate genetic system capable of implementing uh, sex differences in a variety of uh, uh, animals that uh, David Haig here has studied. In the condition called Turner syndrome, a child uh, has just one X chromosome but can get it either from her mother or her father. When she inherits an X that is specific to girls, uh, she is on average better at reading emotions, at body language, at reading faces, uh, better vocabulary, and better social skills. Um, just one note on, st on uh, stereotypes, and then I'll, um, I'll end. Um, are these stereotypes? Well, many of them are, although I must say not all, such as female abilities in uh, spatial memory, mathematical calculation, and so on. There seems to be a widespread uh, assumption in much of this discussion that if there is a stereotype, that explains a difference as being the cause of differential expectations. But of course, the causal arrow could go in either direction. Stereotypes might reflect differences. And in fact, there's an enormous literature in cognitive psychology that says that people are good intuitive statisticians and that their prototypes and conceptual categories track the statistics of the natural world pretty well. And that is, uh, just as an, uh, an example, we do have a stereotype that basketball players are taller on average than jockeys, but it certainly doesn't mean that our stereotypes cause that difference in height. Likewise, uh, Alice Eagley and uh, Jessamyn Eccles have shown that most of people's gender stereotypes are in fact pretty accurate. Indeed, the error is in the direction of underpredicting sex differences. So to sum up, I think there's more than a shred of evidence for sex differences that are relevant to statistical gender disparities in elite science departments. There are reliable average differences in life priorities, interest in people versus things, risk seeking, spatial transformations and mathematical reasoning uh, and variability in these traits. Uh, there are 10 kinds of evidence that suggest that the differences are not completely explained by socialization and bias, although they uh, surely are in part. And just to give a couple of concluding thoughts, none of this I think is provides any grounds for ignoring the biases and barriers that keep women out of science. As long as we keep in mind the distinction between fairness on the one hand and sameness on the other. They are different things. I'll give the final word to Gloria Steinem, who said that there are very few jobs that actually require a penis or a vagina, and all the other jobs should be open to both sexes. Thank you very much. <laughs>